angels, and more. We'll discuss important issues like the sanctity of life, religious freedom, protecting students, strengthening families, praying for our nation, and how you can impact America's future through a biblical worldview. Together, we can believe and engage. Join us September 15th through 17th in Washington, D.C. for this pivotal event. Register now at PrayVoteStand.org. That's PrayVoteStand.org. Consensus, if there's such a thing in science today, seems to be God is out. And if you're really going to be an authentic scientist, you got to leave God out of the picture. Am I wrong? Is that is that a, 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 an, an, an inaccurate perception of what is happening today, as opposed to what might have been the case in the 18th and 19th century? Yeah, unfortunately, that does seem to be the case more and more. The idea of uh, if you're standing on the authority of God's word, you lose your quote-unquote credibility as a scientist. And there's been instances where people who have tried to publish articles in peer-reviewed um, secular journals that haven't been able to or have had their publications revoked because they are creationists or have uh, also published under uh, fake names, too. And uh, unfortunately, within the climate science, too, there's people who are not receiving funding at times if they're not going along with the climate alarmist narrative. So that is unfortunately increasing, but God's word tells us to be strong and courageous in the Lord, and we need to stand on the authority of God's word. We need to be scientists who um, uh, delight in God's word, who read his God's word and study it, and also who obey it. And um, those are important things to keep in mind and um, to remember as we're conducting science. Okay, how can people learn more about everything that Answers in Genesis is doing that you and Ken Ham and, and your entire team are doing? How can they access that information, find out more about your organization? Yeah, they can go to our website, answersingenesis.org, and they can find more information about visiting the Creation Museum as well as the Ark Encounter. And actually, at the Ark Encounter, we have an exhibit on the third deck where we talk about climate change and we talk about these topics from a biblical worldview. Many articles on our website, answersingenesis.org. I actually wrote an article with Avery Foley, who is a writer at the ministry, and it's called Climate Alarmism. So if people want to look for a little more information about this, they can uh, find it there as well. All right. Well, Jessica, it, it, I, it, it, people can get very discouraged because they seem sometimes to feel overwhelmed by the amount of, of anti-Christian, anti-Bible, anti-God information that is shoved at them from every direction. It's great to know that you guys are there and you can really find biblical answers that are also scientific and will actually give us insight into the natural world. Uh, so thank you for the service that you were performing for the body of Christ and really for, for, for human beings in general. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, and praise God. It was great to talk with you today. Amen. Praise God. Well, folks, that was Jessica Jaworski from Answers in Genesis. Uh, we interviewed Ken Ham, as a matter of fact, not too long ago and talked to him about these issues. Uh, folks, that, that's a fascinating discussion, and it's good to be able to have it because, as you know, most of the mainstream media now and certainly the scientific, mainstream scientific community won't answer these questions. They don't want to discuss them. It's settled. Shut up. Sit down. You've got nothing to say. Uh, we've already determined what the answers are. Climate change is going to kill us all. And you're in the way. I mean, that's that's the attitude. Uh, Al Gore and, and a m number of others have convinced many media outlets not even to have anyone on who does not believe that we are headed for a climate apocalypse and does not believe, quote unquote, believe in climate change. You see what I mean? The, the language believe. You've got to believe. Well, it's, if it's science, it's not a matter of believing. It's a matter of evidence. It's a matter of scientific data. But it's just like evolution. 
do you, do you believe in evolution? Well, if it's if it's science, why should I have to believe in it? Why can't you prove it to me? Because they can't. They simply can't because it's not true. That's why they can't prove it. It's not true that we evolved from animals. We were created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. We are not the cousins of tadpoles and and snails and and, and monkeys and all that. And I always say to people, you know, if you want to claim a monkey as your uncle, go ahead. But, but no, thank you. Not me. Not me. I don't have any mon- uh, any monkeys as uncles. No, thank you. you know? We are made in the image and likeness of Almighty God, folks. But we are expected to believe in evolution. Well, no, I believe in God. I believe what the Word of God says. So I, I hope that that was helpful to you. Uh, and you can go back to this, of course, and find it in our archives. And, and follow their, go to their website and learn more. Because, you know, these issues are going to come up with family, with friends. Climate change. You're not, you're trying, you bought an SUV? <laughs> And by the way, folks, I I just started reading a book um, called Cobalt Red. And you know what it's about? It's about the slavery and the, and the, 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 the torturous uh, circumstances that people who are mining for the lithium and the cobalt and the things that we need for these electric batteries, particularly in the Congo, folks, it is a human nightmare. It really is. It is a, it is a tragedy, tragedy of immense proportions. It it is really a slave system that they've got in mining these products. And they're telling us, but we're saving the planet. We're saving the people. We're against slavery, but they're enslaving a bunch of people in the Congo right now who are mining for these materials that they need for, for our cell phones, for our car batteries, particularly for these electric car batteries. That's a big part of it. And yet they want to lecture us on how immoral we are because we're, we're destroying the planet. Why don't you buy an electric car? Yeah, that, that electric car these people are buying is responsible, and I'm not exaggerating, folks, is literally responsible for the deaths of young Congolese children who are put in these circumstances and work like dogs in order to get this stuff out of the ground. And this this is all for the cause of saving the planet. You know, anytime you try to substitute human ideas about morality for God's ideas about morality, you are only going to wait, make humanity even worse off than before. That's what Marxism has done. It tries to substitute a new morality for God's morality, and all it's done is kill 100 million people around the planet. And the same thing is happening with this climate change hysteria. It is enslaving people, it is killing people, it is destroying the lives of children because there's a planetary demand now. We've got to have electric batteries, not to mention that the electric batteries have to be charged with electricity. And electricity is, for the most part, powered by coal, which is something we've been told we got to get rid of. we got to, we got to do away with that. So where, where, do you get the, where do you get the energy to charge the batteries? See, half of our, energy, half of our electric grid is, grid is fueled by coal. But again, folks, don't ever look for logical consistency when people are really angling for power. Because the logic of true service to humanity, the logic of actually doing good cannot be found because that's not what they're up to. What they're really up to is accumulating power for themselves. That's what they're really up to. And the rest is just window dressing. I don't have any doubt that there's some misguided people who really think that they're saving the planet. But these power mongers, people like Al Gore, who's become worth, I think he's worth two or three hundred million dollars now, being the climate change prophet. People like that. They, look, when you've got a house, his house is probably ten times bigger than the average house. And you're flying around in private jets and you're claiming all these things only help contribute to the destruction of the planet. And you're doing them all. And then, like like John Kerry, you say, oh, but people like me. You see?
See, I'm special. I'm different. I can't be bound by the same rules that the that the ordinary, um, you know, average person has to live by. The hoi polloi, the the, the dregs, the masses. I'm different. I'm better. And so I've got to fly around in the private jet. I've got to have a home 10 times bigger than anybody else's. Even though I'm using up a whole lot of electricity and a whole lot of energy that I'm claiming is, is destroying the planet. Well, it's different because it's worth it. Because I'm a kind of a messianic figure who's helping to save everybody. This just stuff is just rank hypocrisy. And what all they're really doing is stuffing their pockets with money and, and, and stuffing their brains with megalomaniacal senses of, of, of messianic power and influence uh, and, and, and just accumulating for themselves. That's all they're doing. Hey, who are we kidding? Who do they think they're kidding? Uh, this comes back, though, to the point I've been making again and again and again. We've got to come back to God. See, all this stuff is the result of mankind. Uh, Jessica mentioned Romans 1, thinking themselves to be wise, they became fools. Mankind's attempt to be his own God, their own gods, and make up their own rules. This is where it leads you. As opposed to just saying, Lord, your will be done. Not my will, but yours be done. You know, Judas, as far as I'm concerned, is the is the the, the first leftist we see uh, in in Christian history because Judas was the was the guy who's saying you can't you can't use that ointment on Jesus. We got to give that. We got to take that and give it to the poor. And what was Judas really doing? Stealing the money for himself, using the poor as his foil. We got to take care of the poor. Yeah, typical liberal. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to require $150,000 a year salary for me to be able to take care of the poor now. Judas, the thief, masquerading as compassionate. Well, folks, that's going to do it for today. I hope you got a lot out of this and it will be helpful to you as you discuss these issues with people. In the meantime, folks, stand up, step up, speak up, refuse to back up. Because we cannot be defeated if we will not quit. Because we are on God's side. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. You remember, I'd ask you a question, and you'd take a second, process the question. You'd ask me a question, and I'm like, boom. <laughs> but then what would often happen is I'd have to come back, and I'd have to say, hey, you know, I don't know if I really actually felt that way in yeah. that moment. Yeah, Aaron V. Addison's weekday afternoons at 2 Central on American Family Radio. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association.
caused damage and death last week in both Texas and Florida. Evan Brown, Fox News. A possible data breach at a major government agency. The Department of Agriculture is reportedly aware of and investigating a possible data breach with a contractor, making it the latest government agency being impacted by Russian hackers. In a statement emailed to CNN, a department spokesperson says the possible breach would impact a small number of employees. Last week, the Office of Personnel Management was hit, and previously the Department of Energy. Cybersecurity has become a major concern to officials after hackers last month began targeting a file transfer software called Move It. Several companies have also reported millions of dollars in demands from hackers. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. There are growing concerns about a shortage of two particular cancer treatment drugs. Lydia Hu reports. Cisplatin and carboplatin, they are considered the backbone in oncology medicine. And a doctor told us that not having enough of these drugs... <laughs> just the people being arrested it is their families their friends and it is the fear that has been placed in the americans don't speak out you may end up like a january 6 